Hello and welcome back to the second part of this tutorial. In this part we will be focusing on exporting animations from the editor and re-importing them into the game. As before, any tool mentioned in this uh, tutorial will be listed in the description alongside an extra link to the modding community discord, which is a good place to ask questions or um, get knowledge that you not have due to inexperience or lack of time to investigate further. So to pick up where we left off, uh, I have an animation asset ready that I've gone ahead and done in my spare time. The character you see is probably a little bit different. That's because I have re-imported the correct model with the right weapon and everything. And I had an acquaintance of mine uh, add some extra controls like IK handles and NURB controls so that it's easier to animate the character. The addition of IK controls and stuff like this is not mandatory. You can keep things vanilla and it will work exactly the same way, although this makes it easier to animate something. And here's our lovely animation. He just has a massive overhead smash. Now, I'm not the best animator. I've done my best to try and make it natural, but I'm sure I've made mistakes here that I don't even know about. So, yeah. Now we can go ahead and... Oh, these controls shouldn't be here. Oh, well. So we're going to go and export it. Uh, my format of choice is FBX. I've already tried to export it once, so there's the file. And the next step is to just let it export. And once it's done, we'll be importing the same FBX file into 3DX Max, and the specific version is version 2010. Here are my import settings. Feel free to pause the video and copy them if necessary. Uh, but overall, make sure that you import things exactly as I've done uh, to avoid errors. And there it is. You'll see that the whole asset seems to be messed up. The skeleton's way too big for the uh, for the mesh, but we do not care about the mesh. You can also go ahead and delete it. What we only care about is the movement of the skeleton, uh, which is what will be converted into uh, the data that the game is going to go ahead and read. So the next step is converting this animation into a Havoc file, specifically from the 2010 version, which is what Dark Souls uses as its physics engine. So you'll need Havoc content tools for this, and I've also gone ahead and made a preset uh, for animation export. Seems like this is the static, yeah, this is the static meshes. Uh, I need to open my preset yet again, because I've converted stuff that isn't animation recently. Uh, da, da, da. Where is it? This is static collision. And there it is. It is version 3, which is the latest up to date. And this is what the preset does. It first scales the scene down to one tenth, I believe, or like one percent. It then extracts the motion from the root of the skeleton to just determine where the character is going to go. It is then flipping one of the axes. And then it creates a skeleton from a list of bones, although this is the wrong list and we're going to have to go and select the correct skeleton, ignoring the root node, so the master would be the first bone. And there's definitely some extra entries here that I haven't removed, and it's got 152 bones in theory, I think they should be 142. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the extra entries, which should be all these NURB controls and IK controls. Uh, these extra informations are going to cause the skeleton data to be misread by the game, and it will probably be causing problems in the future. And so I'm going to go ahead, select these, and yeah, that's it. There's another one, and another one, and another one there. I think I've picked all of them. It looks like I have. Can't really see anymore. This step is kind of crucial because if we leave extra information, as I said before, uh, the result will be a T pose and the game will not know what to do with your data whatsoever. That's because you've got too many bones and it exceeds an array of some kind and the game goes, ah, uh, pfft, I don't know what to do. Sorry. Should be okay. Uh, it then. Creates the animation, I have to select the range uh, of frames we want to bake. Our animation is 200 frames, so there we go. Use skeleton is completely normal, but one particular uh, detail that we need to pay attention to is name animation tracks. Uh, if you don't do this, the animation will be considered invalid. I don't really know why, but this is how the system works, so we're just going to leave it on. 
and should be fine. Extract motion, uh, with this we'll be determining the movement of the character and we need a specific note, in this case root is perfectly fine to determine where the character is. This step compresses splines and this one removes anything that is not useful related to animation. And finally, this final step is where we decide the name of our file. In this case, 3000 is used for attacks in enemies. So I'm just gonna name it an arbitrary number such as 3033 maybe. Yeah, there we go. And in theory, we're done. Like you could import this animation as is, just export it out of uh, Havoc if you are running Prepare to Die Edition. However, if you're running Dark Souls Remastered, which might be the case, you'll need to convert this file into a different format using a script. Uh, we'll cover this step later on. To test if this works, we're just going to go and import it into Dark Souls Prepare to Die Edition. I'm just going to open the correct animdnb cc2232. And I'm just going to go and decompress it once again to make sure that any work that I've done in the past isn't being overwritten if I recompress the folder. This is the thing. If you save some work that you've done on the AnimDNB file and you then recompress the file from your extraction, it will overwrite that work. So this is why I recompress it. And yeah, we go into this folder and we can paste our animation straight up inside of it. One more thing that we need to do is go back and modify an XML file, this file specifically. It contains information related to uh, what data the system needs to compress into its own NDMB file. So we need to add an entry to this database. Uh, let me see. We need entry 3033. So the last one is 3026, it seems. Yeah, so we can go ahead, copy the entire entry, paste it afterwards, and just change the entry name to 3033 on the ID and the file is 3033. Perfection. Uh, this should tell the system once we go and recompress it that this animation is part of the package. So recompress it with Yabber and go back, open Anim Studio. So if we open new instance, go under file, uh, these are all the recent files we worked on, but none of these might be ones we needed. So just open a fresh instance. Uh, nope, this is the wrong folder. Under data, character, open C2232. And in this case, it's presenting me with this error, but it's because I've done something wrong somewhere and I am going to ignore it for now. So the next step is to copy any existing animation, just basically duplicate it and convert the data, actually convert is the wrong word, swap the data of that animation for a new one. So in this case, we're gonna go File, uh, Duplicate Animation, any animation works. And after that, we're gonna go File and Edit Current Animation Properties. So in this case, it's 26, we want 33. So change every ID to 33, including that one. And this should work. Nope, it doesn't. So don't panic. I suspect that the error is there because I have messed up the export process. I have left some extra bones into the conversion. And yeah, we have removed the controls that were left over that shouldn't have been in the original skeleton. Just one more check to make sure everything is correct, which seems to be the case. And we can go on ahead and export this thing, the same file, just making sure that it's the right path. Uh, yeah, seems like it's right. So here we go. Just overwrite this file, re-import it into the correct animdnb. Just gotta move it to the correct folder because this is not the right place where this should reside. In fact, it should reside into C2223. Blah 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 blah. Paste it. Yeah, we want to overwrite this. Close TerraCopy. Close everything. Recompress this folder. And once that's done, and if we reopen Anim Studio, we should have our lovely animation up and running. And yeah, ignore this error. Let's redo the process. 
we're just going to duplicate the animation and then do what we did before which is just insert the data from the new animation we want overwriting the old one so it's 3033 on all fields and once that's done this thing should not t pose anymore and should be doing what we want it to do and there it is actually i think i may have done a mistake where yeah i think i've got too many frames here so let me just readjust i've done a mistake where i have forgotten to reinsert the correct number of frames it's 287 but it should be 200 yeah and should be right this time once again the process is always the same uh the correction of mistakes is very very tedious because you have to repeat the same steps over and over again until you've got it right and it takes much longer than it should but we're technically modding a game so we have to fight with this slow and tedious process every time and it comes with the territory and now that the animation's been reimported we can just go on ahead and reopen this file same steps as before duplicate uh, and insert new data. I'm using shortcuts, which speeds up the process a bit. And voila, animation is imported. Should be working just fine. Beautiful. Checking everything is okay. Looks like it's fine. I could have done a better job at animating this, but I'm not an animator, so I don't know what exactly I am doing in this case. But it looks fine to me. Uh, I think it's acceptable for the level of skills I have. I'm sure someone out there is way more skilled than I am, and that's okay. I haven't spent much time animating at all compared to what I've done in other fields, so that's fine. We can now go on ahead and import this into Dark Souls Remastered. To do so, we need to convert the animation data from Havoc 2010 to Havoc 2015 using a tool named Anim Tag Tools. To use it, we simply take our data, move it to the right folder, and then we drag it and drop it on the script. The script will do its magic, and once it's done, it will be converted and ready to import. Once that step is completed, we'll just have to repeat the same process that we've done for Dark Souls Prepare to Die Edition and import the data in the correct folder, uh, which is also compressed with an extra layer of DCX compression, but with Yabber, we shouldn't really be feeling it. Once again, C2232, AnimDNB DCX. We're just gonna decompress it to make sure we're not losing any work. Go into the folder, character, right folder with all the data, paste the data, and go back, proceed to modify the XML data, which otherwise the compression wouldn't, wouldn't work with it. And we're just going to add the 3033 entry that we have added to the data. There we go, duplicate it. 33, 33. Now close the XML file and recompress your data with Yabber once again. If you've done a uh, normal Yabber decompression, this should automatically uh, convert it to DCX. So we'll navigate to the root folder. This is definitely not it. And there, that's the right folder. Yabber. Directly, and there we go. The data should have been compressed, and we can now proceed to open the file with our animation viewer and verify that everything is working. So, launching Anim Studio once again, and this time we're going to open the Dark Souls Remastered file, which is obviously in the Dark Souls Remastered folder, so I need to go and locate it. There it is. Open it. And once that's done, we will navigate to the uh, Tools tab. Uh, where is it? Uh, yeah. And downgrade animations 
from Havoc 2015 to Havoc 2010. So we'll go on ahead and select our animation, which is this one, hit open, and Dark Souls Anime Studio will take care of the rest. Uh, just give it time, it's a lengthy process, it can take a couple of seconds. It can sometimes crash and the solution is to just close it and reopen it and retry. Once the conversion is done, uh, you can go on ahead and duplicate an existing animation, import a new data uh, with the same process that we have used before in the Prepare to Die edition, just like that. And once you've done this, you'll probably see the character T posing. Do not panic, it's absolutely normal. The final step will be to save this file and just reopen it. And once that is done, voila! Our animation is working. Thank you for watching this second part. Uh, we'll meet each other in part 3, where we'll be taking care of hooking up the animation to the AI, as well as tagging it for attacks and visual effects. See ya!